Hi guys, I'm Larry, your host and cook from Field to Plate. Um, welcome to another episode tonight, or this evening, morning, whenever you're tuning in, watching this one. We're excited to be sharing this. Today, we're going to be making blackened snapper on a bed of actual, it's just a rice blend, like a rice, part, rice pull off, and it's got natural long grain, or er, Long grain, wild rice, white rice, brown rice, just a mixture of rice. You can buy this at your local store. Um, if you can see my skillet's good and hot, and that's what we're wanting. But you can buy this at your um, local. I know Kroger's has it. Some other stores have it. So um, buy it. This is what we're using. I actually already have it cooked. Just follow the directions on it. Rice is pretty simple. Didn't We're not going to go through steps of that. It's a cup and a half of water, cup of rice. Let it boil, turn it down, simmer 15 minutes, and it's done. So, we're going to have rice, we're going to have red snapper, and then we're going to have, on top of the red snapper on a bed of rice, we're actually going to have New Orleans-style barbecue shrimp. So, we're excited. We're going to get started right in on this. As you can see, I have half a cup of butter, eight tablespoons of butter, and a skillet that's already hot. I'm adding to that uh, about two tablespoons of Worcestershire sauce, and about a tablespoon and a half of minced garlic. Okay. Then to that, I'm actually adding a splice blend of um, paprika, chili powder, or not chili powder, but red pepper, um, basil, dried basil, dried rosemary, and garlic. And this makes her blend up for a barbecue shrimp. It's a unique blend they use down there for it. And um, you want to mix this in with that. We want to give this a stir. Let me step back here and get me a spatula. We want to just give this a nice stir. There are a couple ways you can make this. You can make this and you can let this actually set overnight. And it makes it somewhat better. It'll let all your flavors infuse with the butter and oil. I put about a tablespoon of olive oil in it. You can also put a um, quarter cup of beer if you have that in it. And don't worry, all the alcohol cooks out, so it's fine. Just depend on what you prefer. But um, I add olive oil to mine and um, butter, and that's it. And it's pretty simple. It took me like five minutes just to get this um, get this together. And it's just a real bold red sauce. It's not super spicy, but it's got really good flavor. So we're going to turn the skillet back up and let it be getting hot. I got a pound of um, Devane shrimp ready to go. And literally, you just add it to there. Watch out for the splatter. You don't want to get it all over you. Um, this is a great dish. The first time I had this was actually the name of the restaurant. It's called the Blowfly Inn. And it's in between Gulf Shores, Alabama and um, New Orleans, little little side road there, just a little place on the bayou. And it's actually, that um, restaurant was actually shown on dinners, drives, and dives, or dives and drives. And, um, and they actually had this barbecue shrimp, and it's one of their staple dishes. It's not exactly like that, but it's close. So, and then one of my favorite fish to eat is red snapper, and I love rice. So I was like, why not come up with a blackened red snapper on a bed of rice with barbecue shrimp on top of it? Sounds good, huh? So when we come back from a break, our, our shrimp will be cooking, finish cooking on the stove top. We'll start to blacken our fish, and we'll go through that process. Welcome back. Um, any of y'all ever go deep sea fishing out there? I'm sure you know, or hopefully you've had a good experience and you enjoyed it. Um, when we always go, you know, they changed the limit where you couldn't keep a lot of red snapper, but you could keep red snapper. And that is, if you couldn't get grouper, you wanted snapper because both of them is really good fish, a good grilling f fish and a good frying fish. Um, I don't know if you've ever had blackened snapper, but that's what we're going to make today. I make my own blackened season, and it's got cayenne pepper, it's got sweet paprika, it's got oregano, it has... Um, dried basil, has a little bit of Old Bay season, has black pepper, white pepper, and um, and garlic inside of this season, a little bit of salt, just regular, um, regular kosher salt. 
This is our black seasoning. You need a really hot iron skillet. Um, you will create smoke. That's the whole blacking thing. Um, and it is hot. It's steaming hot. And you want your fish flays. I cut them with a knife across so it gets some of that seasoning down in the skin side. If you can see that, you just want a little bit in there. Um, I do blacken both sides. I'll put a little bit on this side just so it goes down and grooves a little bit. I don't put no oil on it because you kind of only want that dried in there. And you do want the seasoning to go down in here a little bit. Um, don't reuse the seasoning because you're going to get your hands on the fish. You're going to get in it. So if you make an abundance of seasoning, put it in a bowl that you can just discard it. Um, chicken and fish, you just raw meat. You don't want to. You don't want to do that. So anyhow, I put it on both sides like that. Put a little more on this one. Flip it over. Generously coat this side. Um, this is a Cajun meal, so it's going to have seasoning on it. Um, and it's, to me, it's a really good meal. And you can make this under 25 bucks, um, which, you know, still is quite a bit of money. But it's a, it's a great dish for entertaining someone and something different. Um, you can also grill these. You can use this black and season and grill them on a grill, and it's actually pretty good. But we're going to go skin side down. You can hear that sizzle. I think I can get all three of them in there. Normally, you don't want to crowd it, and I don't. I think we're going to be just fine. And um, we'll let that cook super high heat. It'll make some smoke. It'll probably even burn a little bit. That's part of the blackening. And then we're going to flip them over and do the same thing. When you come back, we'll actually be ready to assemble this dish. Um, I'll show you, I'm going to keep the fish right here, so when you come back, we'll show you the other side, what it looks like, and then we'll show you how to plate it up, and we'll be, we'll be finished and ready to eat. Thanks. Welcome back. We're ready to plate up our um, red snapper flays. If you can see how well and blackened it is, the backside skin side is blackened. That's what you want. That's why it's blackened, blackened snapper. Um, it's good and flaky. If you notice, we only got three pieces left. And sometimes you can get fish. Sometimes you can get fish that's like steak. You just get a bad cut. So like I said a minute ago before, I put that over in the sink because um, it was scorching hot. I couldn't, this is real life. I couldn't hold on to it. Didn't want to, even though the thing is hot and smoking. You get fish that sometimes like beef. You just get a bad cut, a bad piece. And uh, it curled up and it is actually really, really tough. Even in Florida when we get fresh fish, I bought a grouper for party once. And um, one piece ended up like that. So that's some of the things you can look at that, you know, not everything's perfect no matter what quality. So we got two really nice flaky snapper flays here. If you can see, they're just perfectly cooked and really good. We have it. In my family serving dish, this is really old. I got it a long time ago. Normally, I'd have this full of rice, and I'd have four flays on it. But we downsized for a show day doing two flays and a rice. And I put my rice down. I lay my blackened fish on top of it. And I take my shrimp, and I put three or four on top of the fish like this. Try to keep them on top of the fish. Um, the rice, I do not season it at all because the fish and the shrimp has so much seasoning on it you want something a little bit neutral so I do not um, I do not do that your extra shrimp you can kind of just put on each end like this one thing I didn't tell you guys this pan that I do and I like serving an iron skillet because it holds heat and it holds the heat on your rice and fish for a while. I actually had it in, on, in the oven at 170 degrees for duration while we was cooking. So when I bring it out, it's hot and warm and it keeps your food warm. Um, you can do that on, on several things if you're cooking and you want. Now you think, are we going to waste this? No, this is the flavor. This is Flavor Town, whatever they say, what guy says on Food Network. This is what you're wanting. This is our sauce. 
We're going to pour this over the shrimp, fish, and rice like this. Pour it all over. Pour it on your shrimp, around it. And you're good to go. This is a simple dish. Like I said, you could fix this about 25 bucks. You could feed a few people a pound of shrimp, a pound of fish flays, what it ended up being. Um, the recipe is on the website, MTTV. Go and look in there. It's actually blackened salmon, but you can use any kind of fish with it. You can use snapper, grouper, salmon. Um, you can even make this with catfish if you like. Just make sure you get a good, decent thin cut of catfish and you clean it really good. And it's good to go. Um, of course, it ain't going to taste like snapper or grouper. It'll be really good. This brings back a lot of memories for me living in the south, living in Florida, especially when we get to go deep sea fishing. We'd go out and catch our own snapper. We'd come back and fry it. Um, mackerel. If you're fishing, you're on vacation down in Florida and you catch some mackerel, it's super, super good. You cut the steaks of mackerel and you blacken it. It's, it turns out great. Um, we're going to take a bite and try this out. The skin's super crispy too, so that's really too big of a bite. Um, normally I would serve this, and there's a piece of shrimp, don't have a tail on it. Um, hope y'all enjoy and try this recipe out because it is good. Well, Larry, that was such a delicious meal, and we appreciate you cooking for us once again. It's always good to sample your food. And, you know, we're always behind the camera, and we just wanted to come out here and talk to you a little bit about some of your ventures. Um, when did you get started smoking meats? What made you want to do it? Actually, when when we lived in Florida, which I, I'm a guy, and this ain't nothing guy or lady, but we like fire, and we like meat, and we like cooking around that way. But when we lived in Florida, um, down south, more known as barbecue, southern barbecue, eat at several really good mom and pop barbecue places really just piqued my interest. I'm like, you know, I, I really want to get my hands on this and try this. And um, one I can recall was in Crestview, Florida. It was a weekend thing, and he did it like one evening during the week. And we'd go down there and get talking to the guy, and I seen his pit outside, his um, smoker and stuff, and wood just burning, and smell that hickory and oak wood burning, and the pork that you taste, and he made the best, best brick, or brisk, brisket I've ever eaten, the best. And um, I talked to him, and, and he kind of started telling me how he did things and the fundamentals of it, and then that's when I first bought my small backyard smoker and started smoking. Um, did some Boston butts, some wild hog down there, and different things like that. And then that's been 15, 16 years ago when Julie and I first got married. And ever since then, I've worked my way up to where I'm at now. And um, and, and this new venture is something that my wife and I have been wanting to do for a couple years now. And finally this year, we made that step out, and, and this is where we're at now. Well, what is your new venture? What have you got to it is it is going to be a weekend barbecue business a food truck slash trailer it's classified the same technically it ain't the truck you can drive around but you can pull it around and um it's it's going to be saturdays possibly sunday evening after church we're going to try to hit the church crowd from noon to three and um you just get a little bit of my heart you know how over the years my barbecue and ways that I've liked cooking it so I finally get to enjoy it with the public and um, get served the public and, and and that's about about it. So what kind of food are you bringing into this? Well there are two things that I enjoy a lot and that is wings and pork. Um, so on the main menu we're going to have um, of course pulled pork Boston butts we're going to have a sliced pork loin, which I've been working on for years, and I think I've got a, a good handle on it also. I, I really enjoy it. And then my favorite, all-time favorite thing cooked on a smoker is wings. Smoking wings, deep frying them, and um, we're going to have three, three different wings classifications. We're going to have the regular buffalo. We're going to smoke them, then we're going to fry them, get them crispy, and then we're going to either um, spin them in some... Um, homemade buffalo sauce mixture 
my homemade that we make here in house is going to be a sweet and tangy barbecue sauce. And then my favorite is actually the black and rub that is on the red on the snapper. Mm -hmm. Well, I do that on the wings, and what? it is so good. It's a dry rub. You don't get messy, but it has. I mean, and that's one of the flavors that I try in Florida really like. And of course, we'll have you know dress or dipping sauce form, but that's that's going to be um, the meat side. And occasionally, we're going to do some special, maybe some. Um, pork tacos or some smoked meatloaf, bologna sandwiches, smoked bologna sandwiches, um, brisket every now and then there is. We're going to split it up. Sunday evenings is going to be more of a chicken and pork loin. Um, we might have a little um, smoke or a little pulled pork sandwiches left that we'll be serving too, but Sunday evening is going to be more of a chicken and just a pork loin type evening. Um, baked beans, coleslaw, and fresh cut fries. We're not going to have no frozen french fries. We're going to cut them fresh to make, fry them, and you get them, you're going to get them like that. That all sounds really great. It sounds delicious. So are you going to be using any of your local products or garden foods? Um, I'm going to use as much local products as I can use um, far as far as meat and stuff like that. Garden products. Um, yes, if I can incorporate maybe days we, you know, if we have cabbage coleslaw or smoke, smoke cabbage, um, I am going to be serving um, some homemade 14 day pickles with sandwiches. You'll probably get a couple, it ain't going to be nothing major, but a couple pickles. That's uh, kind of going to be surprise the signature is going to be with a sandwich, just something that no one else hopefully served or done. And um, then, of course, a barbecue sauce. It's, um, it, it's locally made, and so it'll be locally made. And well, that all sounds great. Uh, where's your first place you're going to set up at? We're going to be set up at Fannin's Produce. Um, Sarah, the owner of Fannin's, um, or one of the owners, and I've discussed this for a year and a half. And we're actually going to be set up at her place on Saturdays and Sundays afternoons. I will be setting up later eventually at the um, live on the lick and when we get all of it set up there's some still stuff there's some working on where not only I but hopefully all local restaurants and anybody in Morgan County that can come down there we can set up together and serve the people and it'll be great and um, and then we'll do some special events like some festivals and different things that we see maybe court days and stuff like that be setting up but my main focus is serve the people in Morgan County, Ellick County and um, Wolf County, the surrounding counties that maybe they not have to go Moorhead or Paintsville or something to get good barbecue that they can come to Morgan County or maybe I can do some festivals over there and serve serve our local communities and bring something here that that's not in West Liberty as fresh, you know, freshly made barbecue and, and that's my heart and my goal is to um, give back to the community something I enjoy and something I love that maybe they'll enjoy. That's well, really great. Well, Larry, we're definitely excited and we're very proud to have a person like you in our community that wants to serve the community, especially in this way. You know, food's the way to my heart, so, you know, you've already got that. But once again, we really appreciate you uh, doing this show. And, and People can follow this along on Facebook. Yes. You have a yes. Facebook page for We it? have a Facebook page. It is Barbie, Blaze Barbecue and Wings. So um, stay tuned. We've been posting updates on the on our um, barbecue or on our food truck trailer as we're getting it done and finished. Um, this coming week we'll be completed with it. We'll be um, ready to serve the people and so stay tuned. We try to post when we're cooking and doing stuff. And um, the menu will change because we're not going to be stuck to certain things. We will have specials. We will have certain weekends. We'll have different things. So. Um, I'm going to throw some twists in there and I'm going to throw some stuff maybe someone wouldn't expect like some, you know, barbecue tacos, this and that. So, um, so we're going to keep it mixed up and hopefully, hopefully people will like it.